Previously, we have done ensemble, if you all remember. What was the ensemble? It was basically the collection of collection of n number of identical systems. Yeah. Now suppose you have a box and you need to find the particle at a particular reason. Let's say this reason. So what you can do? You can do the observation for n number of times. n number of times. Let's say 1000. You did 1000 number of observation on a single system. What was the question? The question was the particle of being in this small reason. Clear. So instead of taking thousand number of observation on a single system, what we can do is we can consider ensemble, where we consider thousand number of search copies of that system and take the observation only once. We take the observation only once. So both of them will give you the same probability. But in a dynamic system, what happens is the system starts to evolve. Let's say at you are finding the position of a particle at different time at this reason. Let's say at t equal to zero, you started noting it was somewhere over here at t equal to one, somewhere over here, so on and so forth. So how long should you wait? So how long should you wait or basically how many number of observation should you take or how many number of ensemble you must take? That we have already done. The number of observation or the number of ensemble will be given by what? The ratio of frequency. Basically it will be given by frequency. When your frequency starts becoming constant at that time, you can stop or that will be the number of ensemble or the number of observation you want to take. Now the total probability is given by what? Your number of microstate for which you are considering divided by total number of microstates. Or if you were using was J by summation of Gazi. Now, how did we end up with this probability? Because for a given system, let's say we want two particles. We have a compartment, we have a particle A and B. So how many different types you can arrange this? First is AB and no particle over here. That is basically what? Two zero. Similarly, you'll get one particle over here on the particle over here. So it will give you what? One, one. One, one. Similarly, B can come over here. A can go over here. You'll get what? One, one. And finally, you'll end up with zero, two. So most probable or the, if you want to find the probability of particle being in this macro state. Now this was called your macro state macro state the number of micro state at that region was what two suppose you want to find in this configuration then it will be considering how many micro states were there two two divided by total number of micro state one two three four. Two, two, four so the probability is basically half so that's why you can write this in this fashion as well which is straightforward if you know or if you know the formula because omega z as you all remember how we can write if you all remember n factorial divided by what n factorial n factorial n minus n factorial mm -hmm. and total number of microstate if you remember is given by 2 to the power n do you remember yes sir how many particles were here and the compartment 
4 not 2 to the power 2 will give you 1, 2, 3, okay. 4, 5, the binary. So this you can write as what? You can basically write this as n minus n to the power n. This you can divide it into two parts, if you remember. Q to the power n. n. Okay, omega. Or basically q to the power n. Or p to the power n, sorry. p to the power n. Because it was something like this. q to the power the small n. It was something like this. Because both of the p and q are same, half and half. So you will exactly end up with this. So basically what the probability of particle being in a particular macro state Clear? On a particular macro state is given by what? The number of micro state which you are considering divided by total number of micro states. Clear? So let's consider one example. And if you want to find the average of certain quantity, let's say of any property X or something, then it is given by what? summation of xj omega j divided by summation of omega j. The average definition is basically given by this. This is a normalizing factor, if you all remember. Now, let's say a system has how many? A system has five different, five different microstates. Five different microstates. Macrostates, sorry, sorry. Macrostates, which has a following microstates. We have 6, 20, 42, 12, and 2. Now, find the probability of particle being in. Question is probability of particle being in different microstate is basically given by what let's consider this probability of being in this microstate suppose it will be basically what six divided by sum of all or summation of omega j will be what six plus 20 plus 42 plus 12 plus 2 and this will give you how much 82 so basically, it will be 86 divided by 82. So similarly, for the others, it will be 20 divided by 82, and so on and so forth. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, suppose some properties is defined. Let's say the X property is defined. It could be anything. It could be energy. It would be position. It would be momentum. Clear? I'm just representing. I'm just representing it with x. So the x associated with the system has the values. This is the energy associated with the system has the values four, four, two, six, and ten. And the question is, what is the average value of this energy or x? What is the average value? is straight is very straightforward what you have to do is what you have to do you have to do what summation of xj omega j divided by total number of microstate so the energy associated so the number of microstate associated with energy 4 is how many? 4. So it will be 4 times of 6 plus, similarly for the second one it's, second one is how much? It's 20. So it will be 20, sorry, 4 times of 20 plus 42 times of 2 plus 12 times of 6 plus 10 times of 2 clear divided by 
total number of microstates. So the average energy or the average of this quantity is given by what? 3.41. So this was the ensemble. So till now, do you have any confusion? Any question, any confusion? Sir, once more, sir. Sumiran? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Morning. OK, actually, what we discussed first was the same thing, ensemble. What we have done. Clear? Ensemble was the collection of n number of identical systems. So your probability was given by your number of microstates divided by total number of microstates. So we consider one example where we had this kind of macrostates, microstates, sorry, five different macrostates, whose microstates was this, and we found the probability of particle being in each of the microstates. And also we find the average energy or a certain quantity. So today we are going to start with what? Something different. Now, when we consider a very huge number of particles, it will be very hard to distinguish or have an arrangement into different kind of setup. Let's say previously we were doing just for one or two particles. So this was easy. We could easily define this. And suppose if the number of particles is extremely large, now then it will be very hard to handle this kind of system. And to handle this kind of large system, what we have, we have developed something. And there are some of the, we have developed some techniques. And also there are few of the guidelines or the few of the fundamentals laws or the few of the laws of the statistical mechanics. So in this lecture, what we are going to do is now, till now we have finished all the probability, all the average energy, how the system can be distributed, how there are different microstate, macrostate. Now we are going to study about the laws of statistical mechanics. Fine. Any problem? No, sir. Okay. Now, first, before starting, we have to do what? Degree of freedom. Do you know what is degree of freedom? What do you mean by degree of freedom? Sir, for example, if the particle is in 3D. Okay, 3D. What kind of particle? Then a single particle monoatomic, let's say. Single. Yeah. Okay, single particle. Its degree of freedom is three. Its three. degree of freedom is three. three. Why? Because it's in three plane. Because it's allowed to move so in. Normal direction, it can move. Okay, basically. Uh, because to specify this position, you will be needing what? Three different coordinates. Basically, that is called it. Three different independent coordinates. Please remember. Three different what? Independent coordinates. X, Y, Z we need. So that's why we consider this as degrees of freedom to be three. Clear. Yeah. But in a statistical point of view, a monoatomic is what? A simple system. Now, if you want to define an energy or associate an energy, an energy, with this monoatomic monoatomic molecule monoatomic molecule monoatomic molecule means single atom monoatomic molecule then how many degrees of freedom will be needing and the total number of degrees of freedom which you will be needing is six why Why do we need six? Momentum, sir. Because basically, yeah, exactly. Because here we are talking about energy. Previously, we were talking degrees of freedom in terms of what? Position. In how many different ways this particle can move previously, the question was. Now the question is, for this given molecule, what are the different energy? Now this is basically given by what? Is 
these three positions plus s corresponding three momentum clear so that's why its degrees of freedom will be six is it clear yes sir now if there are n number yes, of sir. molecules if there are this is for a single molecule now if you have n number of molecules then what we will have then how many degrees of freedom we will have will be having 6 in is this point clear non interacting let's say because yes, let's say one particle can have the six degrees of freedom another particle will also have six degrees of freedom so on and so forth so we'll add all of the degrees of freedom and end up with six in does the system will have what n into f number number and number of particles okay basically for let's say any other kind of molecule it will be what n times of degree of freedom f is here degree of freedom i think it's clear is this point clear yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay fine <clears throat> Now, first we talk about position space. What is position space? What is position space? Do you know? Your Cartesian coordinate system, just the simplest form, it's a Cartesian. Position in space is basically where you find the position, where a particle is located. Clear? Let's consider your particle at this point. Let's say your particle at this point. Then its corresponding position will be what? Let's consider this x, y, and z. So its position is basically given by x, y, z in three-dimensional space. In 2D, how many coordinate do we need? How many coordinate do we need? Two. Hmm? Two. 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 Yeah, exactly. X and Y or Y or Z. Clear. Now the volume of the small element in your position space is given by what? In three dimension, three of the coordinate will give you what position. A small element, the volume of a small element is given by what? Small element. Let's consider this element. Let's consider, let's don't consider that also. Let's consider this. What is the volume of this? What is the volume of this? Can anyone tell me? A into B into C. Length into breadth into height. Is yes, ABC. Yes, sir. A cube. A, B, C. Different sides are different. It's not a cube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if it's a cube, then it will be a cube. Now, similarly, if we consider a small element, what of side instead of considering side as a, where was the x direction? X direction was going in this direction. So let's consider this as dx. Let's consider this as dx. This as dz, and this as dy. So your total volume or small element volume dv is given by what dx dy dz is this point clear
is this point clear or not yes sir yes sir now the small yes sir now the volume of small element is basically given by in position space in position space the volume of small element is given by what dx dy and dz now let's talk about let's talk about momentum space now you have some idea of a fit of sorry of your position space what about the momentum space what do you mean by momentum space <clears throat> position space is basically good for what your static kind of system for a static system is very useful do you know why because it's not changing with time so it has been just stuck there on your space so we just need to calculate its position now suppose this particle is keep on moving then what it will have then it will start having what velocity clear which in turn if it's it has mass then it will have momentum i'll give you one simplest example let's say your particle you try to find the position of this particle which is constantly moving in this direction now at each and every time you have to note the position of this each and every let's say it is uh, moving with a constant velocity clear it has a constant momentum let's say a uh, less consider even this example particle is now you need to measure each and every position at a given every interval of time but one thing what you know that the momentum of this system is momentum is given by something p is constant let's say now instead of doing this what you can do you can consider what can you consider a momentum space is same as your position state a position space but instead of having position what do you have as a three coordinate different coordinates a momentum pz py and px so why is this helpful because this whole line will be defined by a single point in your momentum space is it clear is it clear or not yes sir yes sir so <clears throat> how many coordinate let's say we have a three dimensional momentum we have a 3d three dimensional system then we'll have what three different momentum which is given by to specify its momentum how many different independent coordinate do we need px py and pz now the small now the uh, volume of the small element in your momentum space will be given by what dx dy dz dpx dpy and tpz is this point clear px py pz we did the same thing whatever we did over there now after this what do we have now this is a very what do we come it's a very abstract and mathematical concept which is called a phase space do you know what is a phase space no sir basically it is a combination of two spaces which you have currently studied what were the your two space velocity velocity no momentum position space. basically position, space position and, momentum. and momentum space in phase space what do you do is you combine this two space i'll tell you how this two should be orthogonal to each other do you know what does orthogonal means just like x y z are orthogonal to each other
i j and k these three unit vectors are they orthogonal or not Are dot product should be zero. Oh, yes, basically dot product should be zero. They should be independent. Actually, independently we can choose a different position. Now, similarly, over here let's consider a two-dimensional phase space. Two-dimensional phase space. It will have two coordinates. On one side it will have x, and on the other side it will have p x. Is this point clear? Now it's a combination of both your position and momentum space. And these are completely orthogonal to each other. On one side, you will have what? You will put everything, all the momentum, all the position space on one space that is called your phase space. And also it has a different other names also. It is also called mu space. Mu. It's also called what? Your mu space. Mu space or mu space, whatever you want, right? In your phase space, you have what? Your momentum and position as the two independent quantity. So similarly, the volume over here will be defined by what? The small is given by tau. It's represented by tau in your phase space, which is given by, again, the same thing, d x into d of p of x. The volume element is basically defined by this. Now, why this is abstract is now if you have three-dimensional system, three-dimensional system, then how many positions position coordinate do we need? We need x, y, z. Three coordinate in position and p x, p y, and p z. Three momentum in here yeah, three dimension, three momentum basically. Now, if you put this all of this coordinate together, then you'll have what? Six dimensional you know, phase space. Six dimensional phase space. Where your x, y, z, and px, py, pz are orthogonal to each other. In six dimensional, this three, all of this quantity should be independent to each other. Is it clear till here? So the volume of this small element in your six dimensional phase space will be given by what? Hello. Sir, can DA. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what will be the volume of a small element given in your six dimensional phase space it will be given by what dx dy dz times of d of px d of py and d of pz now it was very simple Previously, I think we have discussed over the phase space also while doing quantum mechanics. Do you all remember? Do you have any doubt till now? Do you have any problem, any doubts till now? No, sir. Sir, D Z is for no, like phase. Yeah, Ritika. Sir, D Z. Okay, D Z. This. Sir. What is D Z, sir? For Z coordinate. X, Y, Z are three different coordinates. So, so DZ is volume. For Which, Z coordinate. This. Yes, sir. Tau. This is tau, not Z. This is tau. <laughs> this is the volume element in this dimension, mm -hmm. in this six dimensional yeah. phase space. Instead of representing it as V, it was basically, it's basically DB. In phase space, we usually write tau. So basically, this is a volume. To find the volume, what you just multiply all of the three, all of the coordinates. 
Here we have multiplied dx dy dz and the additional dp dy and dpz. If you add a two dimensional, what do we have? If you have, let's say, four dimensional phase space, let's say you have x, y, and px and py. Then your volume element or the volume will be what? Of a small element will be what? dx dy into d of px dy. Now, four dimensional is very hard to draw. Let's consider a two dimensional case. Then it will be what? Let's consider a two dimensional phase space. So it will be easier. Here you had x, here you had px. Just two dimensional. Where you have only x and px. It's just a one dimensional system. So finally, let's consider a small element over here. Let's consider a small element over here. Then what will the volume or the area of this small element will be basically, let's consider this as dx and this is as dy. Yes, sorry, dpx. So it will be basically dx into dpx. This is basically your volume or your area in your two dimensional. Now, if you consider a classical system, you can consider this volume as small as possible. In this case, this is an area, this area as small as possible. You can take this up to a range of, could be up to a 10 to the power minus 31. You can put any, it would be just a point also. But if you are considering a quantum mechanics, if you all remember quantum mechanics, there is a limit to this which was given by what? dx into dp x at a limit of what? Should be greater than or equal to h card by 2. If you all remember, this was here, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If you all remember, do you all remember? Do you all remember this? So the smallest volume which can be taken in the quantum mechanics is here h card by 2, which is here, which is governed by your Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, for classical system, you don't have any such kind of restriction. This volume could be of any size, but according to quantum mechanics, this volume should be greater than equal to h card by 2. So why we are concerned about this small volume? <clears throat> Because that should be a question why we are starting this space space and why we are considering this small volume. Now, the whole idea is previously we have talked about small cells or the small, small compartment or the cells. Sorry, not the compartment, but the cells. And this, the size of the cell will be determined by basically this volume or your area. If you all remember previously, we have considered some different small, small cell. Now the shape or the size of the cell will be determined by what here? Volume or d tau. So that's why we are concerned about this volume or the area. Sir, why we are multiplying, sir? Moment, momentum and position. Momentum. What does that mean? Sir? Momentum and position. Yes, sir. Why we are, I mean, what does that mean, sir? Let's consider a very simple question, okay? Why we are multiplying? Because this is a phase space we have where we have considered two independent quantity. Because whatever is spread out in this phase space will give you what energy for a given time. Any point over here will give you the state of a system. Why I will tell you. First, it will have a position, it will have a momentum as well. Is this fine, Ruben? This first point? Yes, sir. It will have what position and it will have its momentum also. Now, suppose you want to find the energy of the system at this point, then it will be basically given by what? P squared divided by 2m energy. And that will give you the energy of the particle at that point and it will give you a position. So why we are multiplying is now we are roughly getting, we want to 
solve a system with with finite energy clear no the different particle can have different energy so on and so forth so this each of this particle could have a certain amount of energy clear ruben yes sir now which can be given by the system now instead of considering that a huge box and a small small compartment a particle could be in this box or in this box what we can say now is a particle with energy something could be over here or somewhere over here and so on and so forth so that's why we are considering this product of this two to consider this as a small small cells is it clear so dimension that is in it hmm so yeah ruben ruben hello ruben hello sir ah uh, ruben yeah please continue so sir uh, the moment the dimension is okay sir dimensional formula sir l m n this m l t sir basically it has a dimension of what energy joules second del x del p it will yeah it will have a move of angular momentum dimension of yeah okay sir okay sir. is it fine yes sir, sir i will look up it again sir from the beginning sir quantum mechanics previously we have done no ruben do you all remember mm -hmm. now our whole idea over here is how we can apply this into a some thermodynamic kind of system which comprises of different energies because these are the pa parameters pressure volume and energy if you all remember or pvt also you can write now we want to transfer our knowledge of your probability which we have done which comprises of a small small boxes and so on and so forth to a more realistic system with what different kind of quantity where we deal with energy so to do so we want to make the small cell like this small small cell here we make a small cell in your face space tomorrow we will consider some different example yeah tomorrow we will consider a very simple example because the concept of phase space is very important in your classical system also for your in your classical dynamics sorry in your classical mechanics because a single point in your phase space will give you what the state of a system single point will give you will give you the state of a system at a given time now as the time evolves this will start moving let's say it move to here here at different time so on and so forth so at each and every time a single point on your face space will give you the state of a system at that time so that's why the face space is very important you don't have to solve the whole equation of motion also just from the roughly from the face space you can roughly have a behavior you will know the behavior of what the system may look like suppose let's consider one very simple example for this this if this is just a kind of elliptical in shape then this will give you what it's one thing we can directly say that it is periodic in nature that after certain time has passed it has again came back to its original state so it's a periodic system one can directly say about this now what about this kind of system something which starts coming like this now from here what we can say is it is a damped system why so that's why the concept of phase space is very important why this is a damped space initially if you remember it has a certain huge amount of momentum if you remember momentum means higher amount of kinetic energy or certain energy it has a 
high momentum over here, but the momentum keeps on decreasing. So that kind of thing happens when, and finally it comes to rest, when the system has a frictional force. Clear, a body is moving and it constantly feels the uh, resistive force and finally it slows down and it stops. It's basically given by this representation on your face space. Where you don't even have to solve your whole equation of motion itself. Because it's just a space of momentum and position. Let's consider, let's say you have your harmonic oscillator. Which is given by half of kx square. The potential is given by and the kinetic energy is half into mv square or basically p square divided by 2m now p already you have now the total energy should be what conserved total energy should be potential energy plus kinetic energy for a conserved system i'm talking about so e is constant your potential energy is given by what first let's write your kinetic energy is given by p square divided by 2m plus what is the end of the quantity half into kx squared. k was here what coupling constant if you all remember now that's it this is all you need now you plot what p versus x on your phase space and this will give you the idea of how the system behaves now tomorrow we are going to do what some of the simple examples and some of the application of the space space